Hi guys and thank you so much for joining me. If you are new here, I'm Kat and I like to talk about true crime, conspiracies and all sorts of related things. Let's talk about the Tinder swindler today. I'm pretty sure you've already heard about this before, but I really wanted to cover this today. Before we get started, I just want to give you a quick disclaimer. This video is for educational purposes only. I don't mean any disrespect to anyone I talk about in the video. All the information that I'm giving you today is already found in the public domain. Thank you so much. So, let's get started. Simon Leviev, born on 27th of September 1990, is an Israeli conman convicted of theft, forgery and fraud. According to the Times of Israel, he allegedly swindled an estimated $10 million from victims across the European continent from 2017 until 2019 alone using a Ponzi scheme. The story of his criminal activity has gained popularity in 2019 after the publication of an article entitled The Tinder Swindler by investigative journalists working for the Norwegian tabloid Verdens Gang and with the support of Israeli journalist Uri Blau and later on 2nd of February 2022 after the release of the Netflix documentary under the same name. In 2015 he was sentenced to two years in prison in Finland and in 2019 to 15 months in prison in Israel. As of 2019 he is still wanted in several countries for fraud. Born with the name Shimon Yehuda Hayat in uh, Ramat El Kanan, Ney Brak in Israel, east of Tel Aviv, at 15 years old, he moved to Brooklyn, New York, in the USA with his family's friends, who later accused him of misusing their credit card. In 2010, he attended a flight school. According to interviews done by Felicity Morris, Shimon has been committing minor cons like check fraud since he was a teenager. He later changed his legal name from Shimon Hayat to Simon Leviev, using the surname Leviev to pretend he was related to Lev Avnerovich Leviev, an Israeli businessman known as the King of Diamonds. In 2011, Simon was charged with theft forgery and fraud for cashing stolen checks. According to reports, he stole a checkbook belonging to a family while babysitting their child and another's while working as a handyman at their home. He never showed up in court and escaped the country across the border into, into Jordan with a fake passport under the name Mordecai Nisim Tapiro and he fled to Europe. In 2012, he was indicted by an Israeli court and charged with theft and forgery of checks as well as for leaving a five-year-old he was babysitting unattended. While in Europe, he exploited several women using the name Michael Bilton. In 2015, he was arrested in Finland and was sentenced to three years in prison for defrauding several women. When arrested in Finland, he claimed he was an Israeli man born in 1978 and was found with two forged Israeli passports, three forged Israeli driver's license, two forged Israeli flight permits and five forged American Express credit cards. After finishing his sentence early, he returned to Israel to be recharged and sentenced in 2017. However, according to the Times of Israel, he assumed a different identity by changing his legal name to Simon Leviev and fled the country. He traveled around Europe presenting himself as the son of Russian-Israeli diamond mogul Lev Leviev using the dating app Tinder to contact women as Leviev and tricked them into loaning him money that he never repaid. He would charm women with lavish gifts and taking them to dinners on private jets using money he borrowed from other women he previously conned. 
He would later pretend he was being targeted by his enemies, often sending the same messages and images, pretending that his bodyguard was attacked, asking his victims to help him financially, who would often take out bank loans in order to help. He would then use the money gained through the deception to lure new victims, while essentially operating a Ponzi scheme. Later, he would pretend to repay his victims by sending forged documents showing fake bank transfers. In 2019, he was arrested in Greece after using a forged passport. Later that year, he was sentenced to 15 months in prison in Israel, but was released five months later as a result of the pandemic. According to the Times of Israel, in 2020, he pretended to be a medical worker to get the jab early. He is also wanted for various fraud and forgery offenses by Norway, Sweden and the United Kingdom. In 2022, in February, Netflix released a documentary describing his story as told by some of his victims. According to the Washington Post, Following the release of the documentary, Tinder banned the froster from their app. Netflix new, Netflix's new documentary, The Tinder Swindler, gave viewers a look into world-class fraud run by a ba bachelor who posed to be a billionaire. The movie, released on Wednesday 2nd of February, was an instant hit as it climbed to the number two spot on the streaming service top 10 movies in the country. Simon has no connection whatsoever to the billionaire Russian-Israeli diamond mogul Lev Leviev. Simon told three women in the film that he was a billionaire founder of jewel supplier LLD Diamonds. He would show off his lavish lifestyle in the start, making his victims trust them by spending money on luxurious food, trips, activities and shopping sprees. Then he would claim that he is in danger and his enemies are after him so he needs access to someone else's credit card so he is untraceable. One woman estimated that she lent him $40,000, another said upward of $200,000. The film estimates that Simon swindled 10 million dollars from victims across the world. He now lives in Israel as a free man. According to the Times of Israel, he was charged in Israel with theft, forgery and fraud in 2011 for cashing stolen checks, but fled before sentencing. He was convicted in Finland for defrauding women and was returned to Israel in 2017, but he fled the country again. He then assumed a new identity and took on a career of conning women. He was arrested in 2019 and charged in Israel for crimes he committed in the country. He served only five months in prison. He had met conditions for release under a program aimed at reducing the prison population amid fears of an outbreak among inmates. Pernilla Soholm, who was one of Simon's victims in the documentary, was informed of his release. She said, and I quote, I was in shock from the decision to release him. I'm really disappointed by Israel's justice system, which gives a man like that a reduced sentence. He deceived people and left prison after five months. Did you go crazy in Israel? After the docu end of quote. After the documentary, Simon's Insta Instagram account, Simon Leviev official with 159,000 followers, switched from public to private. He has undertaken a new entrepreneurial venture. <laughs> he offers business advice for a fee, according to the tab. His website states that he made it all on his own to become a wealthy businessman. Tinder told the publication that Simon is no longer on the app. We have conducted internal investigations and can confirm Simon Leviev is no longer active on Tinder under any of his known aliases. The documentary focuses on three of his victims. Cecily Fieloy, Pernilla Soholm and Aileen Charlotte. I'm hoping I'm pronouncing the names right. If not, I do apologize. When Cecily Fieloy received the videos of her boyfriend's bodyguard 
bleeding from his head over WhatsApp, her heart stopped. Her boyfriend Simon, heir to a diamond dynasty, son of the Israeli-Russian king of diamonds, Lev Leviev, was in danger. They'd met on Tinder a few months back and after a whirlwind of romance of fancy hotels, private jets and hundreds of text messages while he was traveling for work, he suddenly needed her help. He was scared that his enemies would find him and hurt them again if he used any of his own credit cards. He needed her to overnight him one of hers and also take out loans so he could have cash on hand. He promised he'd pay her back as soon as he was safe. He was a multimillionaire after all. Only it was all a lie. One that Simon told multiple women across Europe for years, all the while living off the funds of the woman he'd skimmed before. In the Netflix documentary, Cecily shares her story of the conman who left her in over $200,000 of debt and nearly destroyed. Together with Pernilla Soholm and Aileen Charlotte, other alleged victims of Simon's swindling, they work to expose Simon to the world, even if he is not convicted of crimes related to the elaborate scheme outlined in the film. As for Cecily, she is celebrating the release of the Netflix documentary she put her heart and soul into. She still lives in London, where she works, as a UX and service designer at Soprasteria, a Paris-based software development company. She also serves as the founder of, of Action Reaction, a non-profit that raises awareness about fraud and aims to create changes in, le in legislation and help victims to get proper help, both mentally and juridically. According to her Instagram, she remains close to Pernilla. The two even went to Greece together last summer. According to Netflix documentary, she is single at the moment, but she is back on Tinder and still looking for love. Pernilla Soholm first came across Simon on Tinder in March 2018, and she was immediately attracted to the fact that he was a hard worker as well as an avid traveler, just like her. She had recently parted ways with her fiancé of almost eight years, but she was ready to get back into the dating scene because she wanted a partner who could complement her independence. Okay, guys, I have to stop here for a second. You know why? Because I have this top on, and you know, like, when you get the feeling of a, a material which is so, like, it makes you clench your teeth, I don't know, but I can't even touch the sleeve that it makes me... Okay, moving on. That's what Simon seemed to promise in his profile and that's why she agreed to travel to Amsterdam, Netherlands for their first date, only for it to end in them deciding that they'd be better off as friends. As the months passed by, Pernilla and the billionaire actually stayed in constant touch with them often meeting up at her base in Stockholm, along with going on vacation in Mykonos and Rome as well. The fact that he had shown up in her city just for a cup of coffee after she had a bad day and his generosity during the holidays further made Pernilla appreciate who he was as a person, making their friendship closer than ever. Therefore, she agreed to help when he began requesting money in November, citing security concerns over his enemies trying to track him down. Pernilla hoped to get herself an apartment from the savings she had, thanks to her work with properties, but since Simon's well-being was more important, she transferred $30,000 to him. Then she paid for several flights for him and his team so that they could go about their business as usual. Yet, Every time she asked for her money back, gave one excuse after another. That's when she learned the truth about her friend from a Verdun's gang journalist whom Cecily had initially contacted, driving Pernilla to work undercover with them before confronting Simon on a call. Once everything was said and done, Pernilla realized that although she never hated anybody, she does hate Simon because of the vileness and disrespect of his actions. Despite that, she didn't let him affect her life experiences and continues to travel as much as possible while still calling Stockholm, Sweden her home. Yeah, that's how long it lasted. It slides off my hair. 
The now independent owner of Pernilla Elizabeth AB added, How can you give trust to a man like that who escaped from Israel twice, a man that deceived and swindled women in Europe for hundreds of thousands of euros? Where is the justice? Aileen Charlotte first met Simon sometime around late 2017, and their connection quickly went from a Tinder date to a full-on relationship. After all, by the time she came across the Words Gang article on her then-boyfriend, while casually st scrolling through social media, they'd been together for 14 months. I loved him very much, Aileen said in the documentary. He was very thoughtful. He would remember every little thing. I shared my whole heart with him. We started talking about settling down together. I really felt we were meant for each other. Unfortunately, though, that's when Aileen learned that she wasn't the only one. Simon not only had other partners, but the way he spoke to them was the same as well, whether it be in text messages, videos or pictures. Therefore, she contacted the authorities almost as soon as she grasped most of the information, especially as she had already handed over nearly $140,000 to him over the course of their association, but she didn't have much success. They needed time, which Aileen didn't really have, considering Simon's history of going on the run, so she chose to stick by him for revenge. Once the billionaire contacted his girlfriend, she stated she believed him with her entire heart, gradually leading them back to their routine of Simon asking Aileen for money. She then managed to convince him that her experience in the fashion industry would help her sell most of his designer clothing at a good price to keep his extravagant lifestyle afloat. However, the truth is that her only intention was to recover some of what she'd lost. Aileen never planned to or transferred any money from these trades to Simon, leading to a few blowouts until, blowouts until his arrest. Aileen Charlotte was the one who tipped off the investigators about Simon's flight to Greece as well as the alias David Sharon he would be using, meaning that she played a crucial part in his apprehension in 2019. He never believed I was capable of doing this, she said in the Netflix original. He knows now that I gave the information to the officials. Since then, though, Aileen has preferred to stay away from the limelight. So all we know about her is that she comes from Amsterdam, serves in the luxury fashion world, and is slowly paying off her debt. Like her fellow victims, she still hopes that Simon will face justice for, de for defrauding them one day. LLD Diamonds is in fact a real company and has been a big name in the diamond business since 1998. Founded by Israeli businessman and philanthropist Lev Leviev, LLD Diamonds works with both rough and polished diamonds across the world. In a statement to Newsweek, a spokesperson from LLD Diamonds said, LLD Diamonds has been a well-regarded leader in the diamond industry for three decades. Our company has no connection whatsoever with Shimon Hayat. He is a fraud who has tried to explo exploit our good name to con victims out of millions of dollars. Our sympathies go, go out to his victims. His fraud has also caused ongoing confusion about our company. Nothing he has said about LLD or anything else should be believed. As soon as we learned of the fraud, we filed a complaint with the Israeli police and we hope that Mr. Hayat faces the justice he deserves. Known as the King of Diamonds, the real Lev Leviev is a renowned diamanteur, diamantor, diamantor, <laughs> who was able to undercut the De Beers diamond cartel and secure his own deals with diamond producing countries like Russia and Angola, according to his official LLD Diamonds bio. He was born in Uzbekistan and his family moved to Israel in the 1970s where he landed a job as an apprentice at a diamond polishing plant. Today, he owns numerous diamond jewelry, jewelry boutiques across the world and works in real estate. He is currently the controlling shareholder of Africa Israel Investments, a real estate and construction company with headquarters in Israel. 
the real Lev Leviev does have nine children, according to a profile by Forbes. His daughter, Chagit Leviev Sofiev, is currently the president of the Leviev Group USA and also serves as CEO for Africa Israel USA, where she manages the company's real estate operations in the US. Her husband, Greg Sofiev, is the CEO of LLD Diamonds USA. Lev Leviev's son, Zevulun Leviev, and his brother, Moshe Leviev, hit headlines in 2018 as part of a group of six sus suspects accused of being a part of a smuggling ring. According to Reuters, the smuggling ring was estimated to have brought about $80 million worth of diamonds into Israel since, since 2010. Lawyers representing Zevolun Leviev in a statement said the allegations against him were baseless and his arrest appeared to be a tactic to illegitimately pressure his father. At the time, Lev Leviev was wanted for questioning by Israeli police over his son's alleged involvement in the scandal as well as five other LLD Diamond employees. He opted to remain in Russia. LLD said in a statement he had no knowledge of the alleged smuggling. It read, Mr. Leviev and the companies in his control operate in accordance with the proper norms while adhering to the law. We hope that the matter will be clarified soon and the suspicions will be proved baseless, will be proven baseless. In November 2018, a woman who had been questioned by Israeli police about the smuggling ring jumped to death at the Ramat Gan Diamond Exchange, reported the Times of Israel. In a statement, LLD Diamond said, with great shock and regret, we received a notification on the terrible loss of a worker in the company. We will take all measures in our power in order to assist in investigating her death in order to put an end to the serious phenomenon of the rights of those investigated being trampled on and the irreversible damage caused by the drive to create headlines. There has been very little update on the smuggling case since 2018 and is believed to be under investigation by Israeli police. And this is the story of the Tinder swindler. All I can say guys, please, if you do use Tinder or any other dating app or any app for that matter I'm not judging anyone for using dating dating apps no in no way I'm doing that I, all I'm saying is please do not send any money to anyone who is asking no matter of the sob story that they give you nothing at all do not give money do not believe people because there are so many scammers nowadays who prey on, on victims and on people who actually feel sympathetic. And that's why, for some, it does work. Because we, as people, we usually feel sympathetic towards things happening. So, oh, this is already like a necklace to me. Yeah. I'll just leave it here. Because not everybody is good in the world. And that's the truth. And, yeah, you, when you... When you don't know someone for a long time, you can't really trust them. At times, you can't even trust someone you know for tens, for 10, 20, 30 years. So, yeah, all I can say is I, I feel really sorry for those women because they work their whole life and their savings for a house and everything. And they gave, they gave those money thinking, genuinely thinking, they will help uh, this person stay safe and not be killed. But it just goes to show the lengths that some people are willing to go just to make easy money. Just to scam others. And not to have a proper job and not have a proper wage. But rather trick others into giving them money. Which is a horrible thing to do. A horrible thing to do. Because everybody works hard for their money. So, yeah. Anyway, you can check out the Netflix uh, docuseries The Tinder Swindler. Uh, if you want to watch it. And if you don't want to watch it, that's fine as well. It's anyway, is already on Netflix from the 2nd of February of this year. I haven't watched it yet because uh, I cancelled my membership to Netflix because I am broke. Completely broke. So, yes. When I did my research for this video and even when I... Uh, did my planning for this video. I said I'm going to watch the documentary before making the video, but sadly, I can't afford to watch the documentary. Sorry, guys. 
if you watched the documentary or you will be watching the documentary please let me know in the comment section down below what did you think of it i'm dying to watch it but maybe in, i don't know in a couple of months i have no idea i'm so broke never mind anyway thank you guys so much for watching today's video please take care and stay safe i hope you like my hair today so nice and shiny i've been using something new on it but anyway guys thank you so much for watching I will see you in the next one and please guys don't forget to give this video a thumbs up or a thumbs down whichever way you prefer either way it's free it doesn't cost you anything and it really helps me and my channel thank you so much and I'll see you next time bye